Okay, so uh, everything that all of the assets that Musky prepares are normally spreadsheets. Uh, spreadsheet, no, uh, spreadsheets. Spreadsheets is the, the data, but yeah. most of the assets Musky gives me are in spreadsheets for, uh, in spreadsheet formats. So the animations are, you know, they're um, drawn in advance, like with the program that Musky uses for the arts. And mm -hmm. I normally, you know, just import them into the game. I go in, divide them into slices using the sprite editor from Unity. Uh, set them their pivots in case the sprite needs it. And all of these animations are, you know, preset. So for the game, we normally use like this three frame idea where most of the things in the game will have three frames of animation. And that applies to landmarks, it applies to towns, it applies to pretty much every single uh, detail in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the things that people notice after a while playing are these small creatures, which we have literally hundreds of. Uh, variations of them, and we place them all over the world in a bit of like a random fashion, um, a bit of like these predefined spawn points that we have in the scene of the game. And yeah, all of these have their their animations. Let me quickly open like one that can be a good Chat. example. Like, Chat like, is loving the critters right now. By the way, cake magic screams so many critters. <laughs> There's one. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, all of these. So for the animations, mostly uh, sends them over to me. I set up like a Unity animator, normally for the base of the landmark or for a given yeah. creature. Different creatures will have different animators, and I'll get a bit more in depth into them in a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and then we just actually animate each of these frames in Unity. So if I set up to the here playing, yeah, it's just mm -hmm. a keyframe system very, very quickly. And so this cute. all applies to all of the <laughs> animations that, you know, just allows that. And then depending on the situation, we might like spice it up with like a small scale up. We mm. might spice it with like a, a, a slight delay. So like each creature has like a more unique animation. So it's very simple to like, in the end, Musky has the other job because he has to do the assets. Because right. other than that, they're ready to go. And I just need to set them up yeah. into Unity. And each creature, for example, like now that we're talking about creatures because they're one of the most common elements in the game, they're going to have multiple animation controllers. So we set up a base animation controller, for example, for this duck type. And then we use one of the good features I normally f I forgot for a while that existed in Unity, which is the override controllers, which are these other animator types, which essentially allow us to keep the same state machine. So this mm -hmm. one we, for example, use for the ducks, which have a standard alternate and floating animation. And then we just have to retarget the clips. And so we can use the same state machine without you know just replacing the clips and we can do multiple variations so for example select here duck four without having to set up the parameters each time yes. or having duplicate and possibly later on like you know making an accident where we accidentally deleted a parameter in an animation and yeah. then we have a desynchronous sync there and I, I don't think that that animation override is this is very commonly used so it's great to see this and because uh, you're not really using a color swap shade or anything like that you're actually and, and that's because with the different colors you're actually adding little details to the animations and not just changing yeah. the colors right because you give yes. me an, show me an example of a character who with the color more than just the color actually changes okay let me yeah. grab you another creature that's uh, commonly used yeah. so well, let's grab... let me tell you the sprites works, all of this was made on Clip Studio Paint. The program yes. is relatively irrelevant because anyone can, we can use Photoshop or Krita. I use just it because of convenience. Mm -hmm. But like George is going to show, we, what I do is I make the artwork on the program. In, inside, I separate it in a grid where everything is moved evenly as to just import it to Unity and it can be separated. And we do not use things like changing the colors inside of Unity because sometimes we decide that we want to add different small details to them. Like yes. this one is dancing, I like it, the kiwi. <laughs> but for example, do you have the one with the hat? Yes, I'm looking for it, and there it is. So right, there you go. <laughs> so so uh, I have to make them on my own end as to give them a small details like hats or the like, which are not uh, always yeah. just put it on top because sometimes they move from one way or another. Mm -hmm. right. Another big, another big example. A more drastic example of that is, for example, the whale. So we still want to classify so these as whales, <laughs> but they actually have like big variations because we have, uh, you know, more realistic whales, okay. and then we have the more, you know, like our studio logo, 
uh, right. more like rounded off ones, but not this one. This is still a realistic one. But then we have like this more not this one as well. <laughs> so it just Sorry, goes but, to show how many variations you actually have and yes. why the animation override is very important. Okay. <laughs> yes. And then we have Tizal. And again, Tizal use it like there are 13 variations of whales. Yes. And all of them use the same the same animation base, and then we can just quickly replace them. And we can right. even do stuff like these. So, so if I can summarize, you have an animator and all the whales have the same set of animations, but the animations themselves are pulled from different parts of the sprite sheets because they're not just color swaps. They have different features like sunglasses, different facial features, different shapes mm -hmm. entirely, right? Okay, cool. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, there's this base animation, which whales only have one called standards. And instead of, you know, setting up this graph for every single, you know, whale variation, mm -hmm. we just create a new clip. And then, yeah, this override controller allows us to, you know, target uh, a new one. And we could have possibly done the system, which is using animation clips. But again, this allows us for a more in-depth set of conditions. Yeah. Again, very small details in the world. But for example, let me give you an example of another creature. Frogs can spawn on lands and on water. So the animator for frogs actually has the parameter for water. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they actually have, for example, these other sprites, which only gets enabled in certain animations. So, for example, if it's on water, this float, this lily pad oh, game object perfect. actually gets enabled. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, Question from the chat about the number of critters from Lucy Game Dev it says: While developing, did you have any CPU, RAM, or GPU problems? How did you optimize so many sprites? That's a great question. Yes, so that's a very interesting thing about our game. So, a bit of a spoiler as we zoom out: everything in the game is actually one scene. So our idea wow. is to try to make it so once you go past the preloader, which loads in F mods, which takes care of the audio, once you know it loads the localization strings and all of that, the moment you get into the game, uh, you are pretty much loading less from that point onwards. Mm -hmm. So the first loading takes a bit like 15, 20 seconds, but after you do that, you're immediately thrown into this world, and ideally you want it to be non-stop until you close it. And so we use multiple techniques in order to kind of optimize it. So just to give a bit some context, we've had two demos for Town 6 so far. One was our early demo, which happened in last June during Wilson Direct, and now we did one for Steam Next Fest. During Wilson Direct, our game build was 5 gigabytes. For uh, Steam Next Fest, it was 1 gigabyte only. So the way we achieved this is uh, we went back and Unity has this thing called crunch compression. And you can enable it for any sprite that's like a multiple of four. So here, for example, 300 and 100 are both divisible by four. So Unity can use this crunch compression. We'll leave it at maximum and quality. So while it takes a bit of time sometimes to regenerate the library, like it compresses them really easily. So a uh, creature sprite, which normally weighs three, four megabytes, mm. creates crunch down to 29 kilobytes. And, and that, show them our content. And the... Show them our content. And yeah, this is specifically noticeable for continents Please. where you know we're still working on optimizing those but you know as we're currently developing the game we want to make it so we can easily trade continents change the design of the world reshape any areas so right now the continents and again please don't do this for the final shipped game yeah. but while we're iterating on them the continents are these huge textures that you know get crunched from 300 400 megabytes down to 60 50 yeah and this is one of the ways that for example we optimize the number of sprites but it doesn't end there so unity also has this very needful neat thing where can you, can you double click on that continent so we can see it uh, right center of the screen the sprite okay, the continent sprite yes it's, it's enormous yes. there we um, go yeah <laughs> can you even zoom in on that actually um, actually i don't think i can oh, but, no, there. Okay, i can zoom in on yeah. the actual game view yes here and yeah just you can tell the size of the things compared the, to the level of details, yeah, and the level of detail. Great, and yeah, so we already import the, the assets as sprite sheets into the game, mm -hmm. but Unity has this thing called Sprite Atlas, which recently got an overhaul with Sprite Atlas V2. Yeah, so what they allow you to do is essentially like select a bunch of sprites or folders and say, Hey, these sprites should all be packed together um, at, uh, when the, the game is built, and so you can uh, get these like. Uh, these essentially mega sprite sheets, which you right. don't have to worry about while during development, but Unity will take this in, create this like big texture of of these sprites all together, and then reference that during actual runtime without necessarily having to do anything 
beyond just setting the sprite atlas up. And what this does is, let me give you the example of the creator ones, uh, where they are, there they are. So the creators, again, uh, they're a, good, a great example because there are hundreds of sprites yes. and they all get packed up into this single texture that Unity uses um, at runtime. And this, you know, reduces row calls, so your or your GPU is accessed less times at runtime, you know, which reduces uh, sizes because all of these files, instead of being loaded separately as they are for the editor itself, they are all loaded in a single file at runtime. Yeah. This is just amazing, by the way. This is huge. <laughs> this is just wow. Like wow is the only reaction for the number of sprites that are on the sheet. This is all of Mo like oh, Mosky's <laughs> blood, yeah, sweat, and tears on one page. We still have some more months to add more. Yes, we still oh, have a yeah. few months of the moment space, to go. Too much space on the right. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's it pretty much allows to do this, where yeah. you know we reduce the, the amount of memory that the game takes as a 2D game. So again, gotcha. we went from four gigabytes to one gigabyte, both like in actual file size yeah. and also what gets loaded to RAM. Gotcha. So another thing, another great example of a Unity tool that might be lesser known, but it's great and has been fantastic. You know, you know the profile very really likely, you know that it helps you, you know, track how much like a script is causing, like if, mm -hmm. how much time is it taking to process. It allows you to check how much uh, draw calls, how much write patches are being made, all of that. But another very handy tool that I believe is on preview uh, is the package for the memory profiler. And this essentially allows you to take um, a screenshot, a snapshot of what the memory for the game is at a certain point. So for example, I actually have here the work I did while converting uh, the sprites from not using Atlas to actually using Atlas. And you actually get this breakdown of you know how much memory the game is, is taking. Yeah. Uh, what is it being used for? Is it being used for graphics? Is it being used for audio? Is it being used for like plugins and whatnot? And it actually allows you to go down and check like in fact where objects and allocations. Like, okay, what's uh, what's consuming all of this space uh, in memory? Yeah. And again, the continents are the biggest offender here because we still haven't gone in and sliced them up and optimized them. But you can see, for example, instead of the cosmetics being all of these different objects being loaded into memory, right here it's the cosmetics, um, the cosmetics uh, sprite atlas, right. which we use for the ship cosmetics. I can show you those in a bit, uh, and they all get you know optimized into a single file, which you know speeds up loading, speeds up draw calls, and speeds up pretty much all of the graphic processing of the game. And this is a great and place for you to track all of that. Yes, this is a great yeah. tool to, to track all of that, and it allows us to check, like, what's the biggest offender? Is right. there something that we could optimize that we haven't optimized yet? Um, and just making sure what we need to go in and change or reduce or apply more compression and all of that. Fantastic. And then uh, Sinpin asks, how are you planning to optimize the continents also with the crunch compression? Question mark? Yeah, okay. So... The continents already use crunch compression right now. Yeah. Again, that was one of the ways we saved a exactly. lot of memory and a lot of file space. Again, like this golden forest was being um, 300, 300, 400 megabytes. And right now it's like 60 with crunch compression. So one thing we want to do in later on, and again, this is to avoid loading the GPU with such big textures, uh, making sure that it's more digestible for the GPU because the thing can also like bottleneck. Yeah. Uh, we want to go in and actually slice the continents in like small bits that we can, you know, then put together again in Unity. And again, just make the overall loading smoother, smaller files, smaller file sizes. And possibly also putting them in their own uh, sprite, uh, sprite atlases, so they're easy, easy to use. Yeah.